It's Tozer. I always like Tozer. <laughs> Tozer just, I don't know. Tozer reminds me of my utmost, and my utmost and Tozer remind me of Jesus. <laughs> I'm not much of a... Although, people... The humorous part is that I'm not really a hellfire and brimstone person. I mean, yes, I believe in hell. I think the ultimate tragedy of any human existence is the reality that some will wind up in a lake of fire that God will cast hell and Satan into and all the fallen angels and any corruption that there is from creation into it at the end of the age and that the tragedy is is that the man that had the opportunity or the woman or the child to be saved was presented and God said he has offered that salvation always to all of humanity and that each and every person has already made a determination within their heart and he knows that determination and has coordinated that likewise into his plan of salvation to accomplish all that grace and mercy and his justice would do had that person lived or does live or exists in a state of being that he can use their lives to accomplish his purpose anyways which being God he doesn't really have to do all that but he does because that's his nature but having said that you know I I wish at times that people could see inside the heart of say someone like me who sometimes the the words because we're standing here don't get to the heart that's sit, sitting in here and the heart is one of tenderness and desire for all to come to a place of joy and to enjoy each other in Jesus in a way that they've never known before in Tozer by its very nature love must be voluntary if any man will do his will he shall know of the doctrine whether it be of God John 7:17. 7, how can the sincere Christian fulfill the scriptural command to love God with all his heart and his neighbor as himself of all the emotions of which the soul is capable love is by far the freest the most unreasoning the one least likely to spring up at the call of duty or obligation and surely the one that will not come at the command of another no law has ever been passed that can compel one moral being into love another, for by very nature of it, love must be voluntary. No one can be coerced or frightened into loving anyone. Love just does not come that way. The love the Bible enjoins is not the love of feeling, it is the love of willing the willed tendency of the heart. God never intended that such a being as man should be the plaything of his feelings. The emotional life is a proper and noble part of the total personality, but it is, by its very nature, of secondary importance. Religion lies in the will, and so does righteousness. The only good that God recognizes is a willed good by choice. The only valid holiness is a willed holiness offered by choice. It should be a cheering thought that before God, every man is what he wills to be and has made that choice. The first requirement of love toward God, the soul need but will to love and choose God, and the miracle begins to blossom like the budding of Aaron's rod. I told my wife that it is easy to love anyone, but choosing to love is a matter of choice that God has allowed us the opportunity to focus the attention of the direction of our emotion that we could choose to love, that we could operate within that ability to make the distinction between the freedom of choice and the freedom of being forced into choice. In other words, I can choose whom I will love, but I cannot be forced to love someone that I do not. So the reality is, is that as we choose to love the Lord our God with all our heart and soul and mind and strength, we have made that conscious decision to focus the attention of our direction of our emotion toward the one who will love us and has proven that he loves us. And that has always been the reality of what love is. It's not a feeling that suddenly comes upon you and you're blind to love or you're 
carried out by love or you're carried away with love or that love suddenly took you by the heart strings and dragged you off bound and gagged you know to some place of nirvana that you thought that it would all be wonderful until one day reality came crashing in on you no that's infatuation and as much as it sounds terrible to call someone's puppy love infatuation that's what it is love as god determined by his definition is a matter of choice it's a freedom to choose the direction you will go and what you will do with that being that you are, which is with your soul, carrying it to the place that you can offer it to someone willingly, that the response is one of caring so much about the other person that you care less about yourself. And that is what love is as defined by God. Huh. <laughs> but... Being that we are spiritual beings, we add to that a dimension that those who do not know what love is have no idea how passionate, how real, how all-encompassing it can be when you add the spiritual dimension of the reality of love, which God is, into the equation. And when you do that, all of creation joins in and it becomes the ultimate reality of what God intended the emotion to be, which is the fulfillment of knowing that God is love.